Another popular topic has been Vince McMahon's decision to apparently, as of recording here, go live once again with Raw, NXT, and SmackDown starting this Monday. What are your thoughts on Vince and his apparent desire to produce live wrestling shows again? I can't believe this is going to happen. Well, but now somebody speculated, or at least promulgated the theory, that Vince doesn't want to give the uh, the networks any chance to uh, to void their contract by not producing a specified number of live events if they're specified to be live even during a goddamn worldwide pandemic uh that may be something he might say oh fuck now you know I've lost the XFL now if they're going to try to fuck us on the rights fees or whatever but you would think the same thing would apply to all elite wrestling with TNT and it may, I don't know whether that has anything to do with it or not, but elsewise, he's just a stubborn son of a bitch. Is he going to send the fucking WWE plane to everybody to, ever, to their house to get them? So that, you know, if, if he's got the full roster traveling and being exposed to a lot of people, you know, in the process of getting from one place to another, that I can't imagine they're excited about that. And weren't, wasn't all the talent told they were going to come to Florida and shoot several weeks of TV all in, in the same week and be done with it. So I guarantee you they're groaning over that. You have seen that it is now confirmed that at least one WWE on-air talent has contracted the coronavirus, correct? I have not seen that. Yeah. See, you just keep up on top of everything for me. Who was it? We don't know. There are rumors, but I'm not going to jump with the rumors because I haven't heard anything that was confirmed, but WWE released a statement. A WWE employee has tested positive for COVID-19. That means maybe it's not a wrestler if it says employee, actually, now that I think about it. We believe this matter is low risk to WWE talent and staff as the individual and a roommate became symptomatic in the days following exposure to two people working in acute health care on the evening of March 26th, after WWE's TV production on a closed set was already complete. The employee had no contact with anyone from WWE since being exposed to those two individuals, is doing well, and made a complete recovery. Well, it sounds like a crew person. It sounds like a crew person, but this is the risk. I mean, WWE wants to go live. They're going to be the only thing going live right now. Even Dana White got shut down. What happens if one of the wrestlers, or two of the wrestlers, or several people involved what happens if someone over the age of 60 contracts this thing because Vince McMahon's doing this? What if, well, Vince McMahon's over 60, but once again, he doesn't put illness over. Um, I, you know, it, it, they have the biggest library of recorded wrestling in the, that has ever been assembled in the history of the known civilized world, and they can't find shit to show for the next month. It, it, and it, and it certainly... They could show shit that would outrate all elite wrestling from their past. It, 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 wouldn't the the fucking Raw that got an eight rating twenty years ago at least get a fucking three now? You would think. I don't know. Well, the other thing is but, about the contracts. I heard the same thing you just said that there are provisions in there requiring a certain amount of live shows. Pretty much the majority. I think only a few are allowed to not be live. Specifically, the ones taped overseas or like a holiday one. Yeah. But, but there's a worldwide pandemic yeah. happening to the point where these stations can't even have all their employees in the offices. I would think Jerry McDevitt would be able to call Fox and say, hey, don't monkey with our, we can't do live shows because the governors of the various fucking states that we were going to do all these live shows in have said, no, fuck you. So don't try to monkey with our fucking deal if that was even a a, a concern. That's just something that was on the internet. So I, 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 perhaps that is not even the case, and they're just trying to explain why Vince would insist on doing live TV every week in the middle of this, and, and that's trying to explain the way Vince McMahon's mind works, and that's not a good fucking road to try to go down. So maybe there is no problem with the networks, and maybe Vince just says, fuck it. We got the place all to ourselves. Nobody else is going to be doing this. We got to get the ratings back up. I don't fuck it. What, who talked to him right before he made that announcement or what news did he hear right before he made that decision? That's generally, it will play a big part on whatever Vince wants to do.
Did you see the statement they released to ESPN yesterday? I did not. See, I was packing boxes yesterday. We believe it is now more important than ever to provide people with a diversion from these hard times. We are producing content on a closed set with only essential personnel in attendance, following appropriate guidelines while taking additional precautions to ensure the health and wellness of our performers and staff. As a brand that has been woven into the fabric of society, WWE and its superstars bring families together and deliver a sense of hope, determination, and perseverance. Oh, oh, God damn it. Oh, fucking hell. I thought that Lanny Poffo was the only one limber enough to bend over and blow his own self. <laughs> but apparently now we find out that the whoever wrote that copy can do it as well. Woven into the fabric of society. Much like that fucking one little fucking irritating scratchy piece and a new pair of pants that you buy that's right in the crotch and drives you crazy. Uh, WWE brings families together. <laughs> <laughs> Do they actually believe it? I mean, here's the question. Does Vince and Stephanie and that top tier actually believe this stuff or do they just put this out there because they want that to be the public image of WWE? Do they well, what do you think? Things? Well, no, Vince, I don't know, actually. Vince, Vince either comes up with it or hears somebody say it and likes it and decides that that is the way that they feel, and then from there on, they feel that way. Is the best way I can tell you. But uh, just the... <laughs> you know what else is woven? And it just, <laughs> it, it, it's... What else is woven into what the... What else is woven? Schools, life? jobs, money, baseball, the economy... But WWE, that's the one that has to. Hey, I wonder it. how are the hookers doing? Have we? It's have like we New heard Orleans about eighty six. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You know, and we've told that story when Bill Watts was first surprised that the the economy in his territory had taken a nosedive. Was when Scott Munz, his advanced promotional man, went to New Orleans. He called Watts. He said, "Bill, we're in fucking deep shit." So what do you mean? He said every escort service in New Orleans is closed. And what said, well, what the fuck? Get your pussy on your own time. No. If there's no escort services running in New Orleans, that means there's no money in New Orleans. And goddamn, when you know who won the pony, they were out of business about a year later. Because of that fucking uh, the oil bust in the in those states and the economic downturn. <laughs> but, the, but has has anybody applied the fucking the hooker metric to this thing. If the hookers are out of business, we're all fucked. By the way, that was the same response Bill Watts gave Jerry Jarrett and Jerry Lawler when they said, where are the blowjobs? Hey, you well, guys yeah, get they, your own pussy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when they came down in 83, Watts, after they watched the TV, Watts said, well, what do you think, guys? And Jarrett said, where's the blowjobs? So what the fuck? Get your own fucking blowjob. No, you know, it, it, because Bill Watts had a crew of of big badass motherfuckers that kicked ass and the people believed his fucking wrestling, but he had all ugly big kick ass fuckers and he wasn't appealing to the girls. And once that he got Terry Taylor and the rock and roll express and, and Magnum was really cooking. Then all of a sudden the crowds were 50, 60% girls, especially young girls. And there became the blowjobs. That was the fucking key. You had he had to get young, fucking good looking baby faces, and then the action and the new finishes and etc. He had people watching the TV and that enticed them to come to the buildings. We need to use the hooker metric on on the pandemic. Do you think it makes WWE look good or bad to the general public that they're deciding to do this right now? Well, I I, I don't know whether they care whether they look how they look to the general public. Uh, it, it, you would think they would want to look good, but they never do from, you know, if Vince is interviewed on TV by Bob Costas and he fucking flings his poo at Bob Costas or some of the decisions they make or the things they do, but to their audience, I think they, they, okay, they want to see us do programming, but you know, my problem is not the clothes set there and whatever the fuck, but having guys from all over the country, bringing them all to Florida and shooting a bunch of shit. Uh, over the course of a week to air for a while 
okay, that's acceptable risk, but you're going to fucking drag them back and forth from the house once a week now for the in duration of this. That's, that's a little pissy in my opinion. And, and probably not only the talent doesn't like it, but people are going to go, they're going to think of that. They're not going to think of, they're going to be on a closed set. Once they get there, they're going to be thinking, what the fuck? They're going to be going from Poughkeepsie to fucking Denver or wherever the fuck it is. They're going. Do you think, it's hard to really say this, but I was going to say, do you think there'll be talent like Roman Reigns who say, no, I won't do this? Or will uh, there, everyone just try to go with the flow and make Vince happy? Well, everybody will try to go with the flow and make Vince happy unless there's somebody that specifically had their spouse is high risk or they've got kids that have health issues or some person in their family that they have to be around. They might have to say something. But boy, Roman Reigns has been erased. So I, I don't understand how that they. That's the only way that you could actually save a top babyface from scorn that the people know are is not only going to make a large amount of money from a big match like WrestleMania, such as it was, or whatever the fuck. Roman Reigns has a get out of jail free card. He's got the pass. They could save him in their back pocket because it's true. He had leukemia. He's got a compromised immune system. He's got kids, blah, blah, blah. So announce that and make sure every news outlet in the world repeats it. That's why he didn't have his match. That's why he's going to wait because he's already had to take time off from wrestling once to fight the recurrence of this leukemia. How much more of a sympathetic fucking figure can this guy be? And then, so he will come back to wrestling when the pandemic is under control. And then he comes back as a fucking returning hero. This brave son of a gun sacrificed his, his career because of his family and his commitment to them and blah, blah, blah. And he was, his compromised immune system prevented him from his big match. So now he's going to get a bigger match and sell that. It's not that fucking hard. Instead, they wouldn't even acknowledge what happened and why he wasn't there. It was exactly the opposite way of what you'd think anybody would go to, to make a guy like that seem like a big baby face. 